Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Diablo 4 beta. We're going to start with optimization of your windows and after that we're going to look at the best settings inside of the game. So now the best setting for windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one, causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphics setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottlenecks. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for an example here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's gonna show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have uh, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for Nvidia, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. So if you have an NVIDIA card, just go on your NVIDIA setting, go to control panel, open it, go to manage 3D setting and just use pretty much the setting that I'm currently using. Honestly, they're pretty much default. So the first one that you need to change is your low latency mode. If you have this technology, make sure that it's at on. The other one is your if you want to lock your FPS. Uh, for an example, you have like a 170 Hertz monitor and you want to stay in your G-Sync ring. Uh, range sorry you just put your uh, FPS here at like something like 167 something like that you want to be under 170 Hertz to always stay in your G-Sync range so if you want to do that it will do that for all your game it's a global setting over there so I'm gonna unlock it and this is pretty much it if you have access to the change ECC state I recommend to uncheck it this will slow your VRAM so you don't want to use that for change resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So you're, if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. And super important, look at your refresh rate. A lot of people are missing this step. They buy like a new screen and by default it's at 60. So use the uh, maximum refresh rate that is available on your uh, monitor. The last parameter will be your G-Sync. So I recommend if you want to use G-Sync, I recommend to, first of all, you need to enable it. And I recommend to use the enable for window and full screen. So if you're playing a game like in borderless mode, it will be applied. Also, you can select just one uh, display screen, depending on whatever. If, if your second screen is not compatible with G-Sync, you will just push it to one monitor. Uh, me, I'm not using it. I have a 4090 uh, for my GPU, so I just want to unlock my FPS. So in majority of the game, I'm getting like 250 FPS and um, my monitor refresh rate is at 170 Hertz. So I just want to lower my input lag. So that's why I just unlock everything, but it really depends on your situation. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue, but if you're playing on a laptop, 
really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's going to make sure that it optimize your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32. Just divide it by 2. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically and you just lower the software like that and you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software and also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2%, 10% boost in your FPS, depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. Introducing Solitaire Social, the game that's not only fun and addictive, but also has a positive impact on its player. And now, with the release of their new book, The Power of Solitaire Social Stories of Impact, you can discover just how much this game can change lives. This book is dedicated to the game of Solitaire Social and the many ways it has touched people's lives. They've collected stories from players all over the world who have found community, improved their brain function, and built good habits through playing Solitaire Social. Not only is Solitaire Social a great way to have fun and pass the time, but it's also a way to connect with others and build meaningful relationships. And because it requires focus, concentration and quick reflexes, it's also an excellent way to train your brain and improve your fine motor skills. This book is full of stories of people who have been transformed by Solitaire Social, whether they have overcome loneliness, improved their mental health or simply found a new hobby that brings them joy. It's a testament to the power of this simple game and the positive impact it can have on our lives. So if you're looking for a game that's not just fun but also has a positive impact on your life, look no further than Solitaire Social and be sure to pick up a copy of The Power of Solitaire Social Stories of Impact to discover just how much this game can change lives. So now inside of the game, so first of all, display, make sure that you're playing full screen. I was getting some random stuttering with my window full screen mode. Uh, adapter, make sure that you have your GPU. I know a couple of folks are playing on the laptop with in an integrate GPU and also a dedicated GPU. So make sure that you use your dedicated one. For the monitor, I recommend to play native. So if you have like a 2K monitor, go just go 2K. If you have a 1080p, go 1080p. Refresh rate, same thing. Pick the best one for your monitor. After that, sharpen image, question of preference if you want more sharpening when you're playing the game. I know a lot of people are managing it in their driver, so it's a question of preference. We yeah, just stay at 7. Uh, after that, font scale, you don't need to touch that. Vertical sync, I'm not using it. I just want to, uh, to have the lowest input lag and the most of my FPS. Uh, if you don't like tiering when you're playing a game, you can definitely add virtual sync or use other technology like G-Sync or FreeSync from Radeon. After that, the performance uh, tab, you have right now the DLSS option. I recommend to go with quality with this one. It will help a little bit, but not a huge improvement, honestly, for the DLSS. I, I hope they're going to work on it. Um, but uh, after that, at balance performance or ultra performance, when a lot of stuff are moving in your game, I feel like the game is too much blurry for me. So just go with quality or don't use it. After that, if you don't have that or you don't want to use it, just make sure that you're using your resolution percentage at 100%. Per you don't one necessarily to downscale or upscale for the max uh, fps me i'm locking my fps at 240 but it really depends on your thermal don't go too crazy with that if you're playing on a laptop with a 60 hertz monitor uh, don't put like 200 and after that you're getting some random stuttering because your cpu and gpu are throttling so it's really question of preference so just move that and depending for the quality now 
If you have 8 gig of VRAM, you can definitely play at high in 16x. If you have 4 gig, go with medium and 4x. And if you have less than that, just go with low with 2x for anisotropic filtering. Shadow quality, this one will provide you a lot of FPS, shadow, dynamic shadows, and soft shadow. Uncheck those and go with low. You will gain a nice 24% boost in your FPS. So this one is really huge. And honestly, it's not that important shadows in this game. Shader quality, not a huge difference between low and medium. So that's why I recommend to go with medium. But if you go to high, you're gonna lose three to 4% in your FPS. Ambient occlusion, I recommend to go with low. Uh, if you go with off, yes, you will gain another 2 to 3% in your FPS. But the thing is, the game looks very flat with the, without any ambient occlusion. So I recommend to go with low with this one. And it's pretty much the same thing with fog quality. I recommend to go with medium. Less than that, you will see that your game looks very flat. For clutter quality, um, I'm not a huge fan of off and low. It's too near from you. The distance is too short. So go with medium and it's not, not a huge difference in your FPS, honestly. Uh, but when you go at I and IS, you will see that you're going to lose a lot of FPS. So my recommendation is go with medium. For fur quality, I recommend to go with low. I was getting some random uh, lag, like drop in my FPS because of this. So that's why I'm going with low. Water simulation, if you have a proper amount of VRAM, you can definitely go with I with this one. Anti-aliasing, a bit of a deception. I hope they're going to fix it, like give you a more option like uh, off FX AA, TAA, something like that. So my recommendation is go with low if you don't use DLSS. Geometric complexity, definitely go with medium. 1% different with low, but after that, if you're going to I, you're going to lose a 3%. So my recommendation is medium. Terran geometric detail, you can go with I. For this part, if you're struggling with your CPU, just go with low. Physical quality, particle quality, reflection quality, go with low. It will help a lot with your FPS and also with some like random drops. Those ones are really important. For screen specs reflection, I recommend to uncheck distortion, uncheck. If you're still struggling with your FPS and you really need like another boost, I recommend to click on low FX. It will help. It will provide you probably like 8 to 10% in your FPS. But as, the, as they say, they reduce the number of rendering particle. Uh, you will see that the game looks not bad, but it's more appealing. So this is for me a last resort. Uh, if you want to use it, it will help with your FPS. Finally, the last thing is in the gameplay. It's not necessarily uh, provide you more FPS, but it's more about like visibility. Uh, so if you want better visibility, uncheck the screen shake effect and uncheck the come back it flash so this is pretty much it guys for my uh, diablo 4 uh, guide for the beta if you have any questions just comment in the youtube section post me your rig cpu gpu and ram i will try to help you the best that i can and don't forget to subscribe to the channel peace